Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Rasulul Kareem, Ya Habib al Azim, Jumhala wa Shfana wa Bidil wa Madadakum wa Nazarakum Siriya Rasulul Kareem. Madad ya Siriya Sultani Rauli wa Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghistani, Sashi Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani, Mandana Shaykh Asham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Mabda Khaliq al Khush Dawani. Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyidullah Sayyidina alayhi salam. Thumma Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Ummah, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidatul Fatima al-Diz alayhi salam, Sayyidu Siddhatina, Siddhaqeen al-Fatiha. Sayyid Shafadiyya Rasulul Kareem, InshaAllah dress us from the blessed birth of Sayyidatina Zainab salam, the daughter of Imam Ali salam, and one who witnessed and partaked in the events of Karbala and Yawm al-Ashura, the day of Ashura and that we pray that Allah grant us from her Divinely lights and intercede for us, our families and our communities and that we be raised under their holy feet and holy shade. And they take our case and our love to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and witness that love and the actions and the deeds that we try to do in the name of these holy souls. Alhamdulillah that Allah granted us this life of tariqah and this way of realities and ishq and muhabbat, alhamdulillah. InshaAllah. We've covered many subjects and let's see what people have concerns and what they understand so far of what's been taught and where we are and what we've discussed inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Contemplating on your sohbah, is it correct to realize that we should not be asking for what we want but what Allah wants from us? <coughs> At a higher level it's most important to ask what Allah wants. What I want may not necessarily be what Allah wants nor may it be what's important for me or beneficial for me. Because Allah asked and warns that don't ask for something that may cause you harm because people are always asking for something but maybe it's not the right thing or at the right time. So a part of this submission and this way of being nothing is training ourselves, effacing ourselves, and Ya Rabbi, you know my condition. Ufawud amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bi ribad. The verily you see my condition and you know what I'm in need of, and Allah is the best of those to provide. But it requires faith, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, can you please enlighten us more on when you said there are beings more powerful than the sun and the sun and darkness veil amongst people? That the sun and darkness veil amongst people? I don't know, I don't know exactly what that talk was but as a reality that what Allah wa lakal karam na bani Adam that Allah's love for Adam and Eve and the children of Adam and Eve and that they represent and carry the representation of Sayyidina Muhammad and they are the favourite creation. So means that 
whatever we see as powerful Allah has given more power to this creation, more abilities to this creation and more realities to this creation. And what the soul can contain is not something that can be described. How can someone limit what Allah wants to give to that reality and to the reality of light? Our life is then to seek that reality, seek the reality of light and that which is eternal. But shaitan makes people to seek the here and not the hereafter. And their goal and understandings of acceptance and religion is what we talked last night. All the concepts of success and wanting are basically by shaitan. What we should have, what we should want, what we should try to achieve from dunya. When stopping and contemplating to see what really Allah wants. That Allah put us on this earth to achieve our eternal reality. All the money in the world can't be taken to the hereafter. All the dunya fame and titles and positions have no value in the hereafter. The one whom busies his life trying to seek his reality of the hereafter then is the one whom wins. If he achieves the hereafter and the realities that Allah want to dress upon his soul then he wins dunya and akhirah. Because to achieve the malakut and the world of light and God's Divinely grace on this planet well already you would have achieved then an immense reward from just this dunya. And imagine then what lies and waits for you in the hereafter, that's then an immense blessing. So when we seek out the light, the relationship with Allah the relationship with Prophet Allah guides us then to the tables of Udul Am. If in the dunya we sit with them, eat with them, drink with them means we take from their knowledges, connect our heart with them, learn how to call them on an eternal telephone line and that's a number that we never lose. Then imagine what the hereafter holds for us. These are the signs for people whom reflect. Allah then reminds if you eat with them, you're drinking with them, you're absorbed in their knowledges then you can only imagine then what your hereafter is like. But if the person is absorbed in the here then they can't imagine what their hereafter is like because they have no idea. What will my hereafter be if all I know is the here? And the people I company with are not pious people and the knowledges I read are not pious and eternal knowledges. Things that we read from the material world very few are eternal that they take with you all the way to the hereafter. You know the statistics on, on winning teams and, and football teams and sports. You can't take any of that to the hereafter, it has absolutely no relevance. So imagine the amount of times people spend on the here and it act has absolutely no value in the hereafter. So then the winning course is the one whom spends their energy and their efforts on subjects related to the hereafter and actions related to the hereafter. And what they accomplish if they can connect and achieve that connection then cannot be understood. When Allah addressed the servant with ears that nobody has heard, eyes that what you can see from what nobody has seen mean each servant will have Allah's unique gift of what they can hear, what they can see, what they can feel, what they can experience of immense realities. 
And we described last night that this is the greatest power Allah gave us is the soul. The ability to communicate, to move, to travel, to see and visualize through the soul. There's no barrier and there's no door if Allah opens the soul. One whom can unlock the vision of their soul, there's nothing that can be hidden from them other than what Allah wants. So imagine then those abilities, the one whom breathes with the power of their soul has an immense power from Divinely Presence, a fuel that never ends and has no limit and no understanding. They hear with God's hearing, they see with God's seeing, they breathe with God's breath, they speak with God's tongue. Means this, this hadith al-Qudsi describes the immense realities. If we understood that then we understand shaitan has no interest in that happening. Everything on shaitan's abode is to stop people from achieving who they are. God forbid they should reach their power. So he entertains them with electronic devices, entertains them with music, sights and sounds and TVs and images so that they don't sit and just connect their heart for the images that Allah wants to send. The greatest fear for shaitan is that you should connect and if you connect and you feel that fires and feel the emanation of Divine Grace you would uh, totally disconnect from his grasp. So he's a shepherd who owns many sheep and he's not interested at all in his sheep running away and trying to be free. Our life is about freeing ourselves from the abode of shaitan and going back to what Allah has dressed us and to free ourselves from the illusions and delusions and move towards the truth and the realities that Allah opens for the souls of insan and humanity inshaAllah. Wars become a great opener. We said that <coughs> marifan, the way of nothingness is the binary code. The more you become nothing, a dot, the more you can see the oneness. The more that you think you're one, you see nothing. You look to the horizon and you see nothing. When you try to become nothing you see the one, you see everything. War is the great effacing because now it's no longer you having the luxury to efface yourself, all that is standing becomes rubble. And when you look to the images of what's happening upon this earth, one side is completely brought back to dust, another place volcano, another place earthquakes, another place flash flood. Everything that was standing now becomes a nukht, a dot, nothing, effaced. And those whom remain within those areas most likely they see the one. So they send videos from these locations and places and people are seeing the children screaming could save their souls, they see the angels, they see the Divine. People screaming, saying they see the angels, they see the Divine because this is the nature of the system. This is the haqqaiq of the binary code. If Allah levels the one, everybody sees, they see heaven. But if we can lower the one before Allah intervenes and has to decimate an entire area, then we are the winners. 
Because to see the One through your own hands and actions has a much more reward and understanding. When you efface everything and say, there's nothing is, is important, I participate in everything but none of it is of any importance. And when we connect and we connect and we connect, the one becomes more apparent. But irregardless, this dunya is going through that because Allah is just. So you can sit with these people and learn how to do it or wait until the crushing comes everywhere. But without training when that crushing comes it's uh, extremely difficult. It's a horrific experience and there's no training to prepare the individual for the openings and the realities and the difficulties that are coming. So again like anything else like uh, opening within the grave. It's better to do the practices on our free will than waiting for Allah to intervene with Divine will, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi with the recent world events that are happening and that they have also turned Mecca into Vegas style city. Will we be able, still be able to be with our Shaykh and Imam Mahdi as knowing that we haven't done anything and aren't doing enough to please Ulul Amr Minkum? Everybody will be with whom they love. <laughs> we said that our life is to make our faith real in every aspect. We can't say we love Allah and we do nothing for that love because when the real test comes the person will run and they don't love Allah. So by tongue means nothing but by action is everything. So we are people whom put our faith in action. When we say we love Allah, hearing it means nothing to anyone. Doing it is important, so we pray, we fast, we do everything that Allah wanted for us because of love. And then we get the reward of love, that you put this love into my heart. You know when we say, Hayal as salah Hayal al-Falah, our reply to the azan La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah that the call to prayer and the call to success the reply is there is no power and there is no help except from Allah means that I'm not clever thinking I'm going to pray. If Allah doesn't want to see my face in prayer it will come to me not to pray. And when He wants to see my face in prayer He puts into my heart a love that it's time for me to be with my Creator. If we understand how to think like that is to destroy arrogance. You think you're praying because you're praying and if you think you quit praying that you're clever and you quit praying but in actuality Allah doesn't want to see your face. So He put into your heart, don't pray anymore you disturb me. If you think like that you won't put the arrogance of your action into yourself. Ya Rabb please keep your love upon me and keep calling me into your presence. Don't get tired of me, don't get upset from me and don't give up on me. And when we humble ourselves in our approach towards Allah then we really understand, la hawla wa la quwwata, there is no help for me to pray if Allah doesn't help me and there's no power that can reach me if Allah doesn't send a power. So I mean that's the love, that was the gift. Not Allah didn't give me this, Allah didn't give me that. Sometimes we talk and people send emails, Allah didn't give me any of these things, why should I love Him? Get lost, don't. You 
think you're doing anyone a favour? Go away, is Allah's gift to you. There's a pit of fire waiting and most are jumping into it. Allah's gift to you was the love, the calling, even that He allowed His name to be mentioned in your heart and in your home. If you play zikr of Allah and Surat Al-Nur Allah is telling you, we allow our name to be mentioned in their homes. You're not playing it because you think, I should do it, should I keep it low, should I keep it high? In actuality Allah won't let you mention His name in your home and if He does, He loves you. Then you feel, this is an honour, Allah has chosen me. Allah loves me, when Allah really loves me, He wants me to love what He loves. Like, come, come, I want to show you something, I want to show you what I really love, this beautific garden known as Muhammadun Rasulullah When you visit someone you love and they love you, they show you what's dear to them. I have this garden, it's very beautiful, come look. I built with my own two hands. He takes us to the reality of Prophet and teaches us, love him if you love me, follow him if you love me. And if we do that and keep the love of Sayyidina Muhammad what happens? We gain now the love of Prophet with that love then we have extra zeal to show it. What could be more beautific than sharing knowledges? Take the shaykh's knowledges and share them, that is an immense love for Prophet In every action show your love for the Divine, share the knowledges. Share the links, send it all over social media. This is the greatest time for spreading light when the world is filled with darkness. What do you want to do to show your love? I came to the zikr but you eat the food. That's not a big accomplishment, the accomplishment was the khidmat and service. I went and fed people for your love, I gave water for your love, I spread knowledges, not my talk and I just talk myself, I spread the knowledges of the shaykh. They were all about the ishq and the muhabbat of Prophet And we live life of a khidmat and we serve and we contribute to make sure the ship is running and the process is moving and powerful and our life is a service. Then if Allah wants you to complete your Islam because that you're just now beginning to believe but when He wants your Islam to be real you have to be guided to the hands of Ulul Am so that you can take your bayat. If you don't take your allegiance then you, you haven't you haven't taken anything in Allah's way. To swear your hand to the loyalty of Allah and to the loyalty of Prophet to the detriment of your own soul. These are now the stages of love. Now we can see how much Allah loves us. I granted you my love, I granted you deeper because you know many don't have it. I granted you deeper the love of Sayyidina Muhammad because all our life we're dealing and many people don't have that love. This is a special gift from Allah Then even deeper than that Allah granted us to awliya that these are the inheritors, the walking qalams of Prophet they have the rose gardens and Gul al Muhammadi in which they produce these ashiqeen, nourish them, 
they plant them in the soil of Muhammadun Rasulullah They nourish them with knowledges and kindness and good character until they can grow themselves into a rose and represent Gul al-Muhammadi, represent the beautific garden of Muhammadun Rasulullah until when you see them they remind you of Muhammadun Rasulullah in their character, in their khuluq, in their actions and in their way and their mannerisms. But that requires action, how can you love them if you don't support them? How can you love them if you don't truly follow them? How can you love them if you don't propagate and share in their knowledges and share their knowledges to the world? Because our life was a service to the shaykhs. Not only I ate food from the shaykh but my life was to serve. And if you serve with all sincerity and now it doesn't even need to be nearby, it's all virtual. People are serving in amazing ways, making videos, making productions, putting out books, putting out articles, putting out everything, putting out food and delivering food and, and mashaAllah everywhere all over the, the earth people are trying to do something. This is then the whole of tariqah and this is the reality of muhabbah. If we do this then of course we'll be with whom we love. If we're doing this but if we just say, no, no I love you but I don't do anything then that hadith is not relevant to the one whom thinks he loves but has no actions of love. You be with whom you love and that love is defined by its actions. People go back into their life and say, since I've come across this shaykh has my love increased for Prophet My understanding of manners and akhlaq and character, the haqqaiqs and the reality of Prophet that love must have multiplied. The knowledges of the months, the knowledges of the Ahlul Bayt, the knowledges and realities of the holy companions, all of those were the gifts from the shaykh. That he shared from his knowledges and from his time, not because he has to but because this is his khidmat to Prophet And as a result the students have an appreciation and love in their character and they show by their actions. Then we all qualify for that hadith, you be with whom you love. And the love bond is the most powerful coming through disasters and difficulties that are coming onto this earth, this bond of love if it's sincere nothing can shake it. This we know from experience, the dunya has done many, many things to us in our, in our journey on this path. But that which Allah bound into our heart nothing from this dunya can shake it away, nothing. No matter how horrific the dunya has been, the love that Allah bound into the heart, the heart is locked. And that's, that's what's needed through difficulty, not to somebody who gets annoyed and you don't see them again, somebody who's agitated and aggravated because of their ego and their nafs and then you don't see them again. This is not love, that was I don't know what that was. But this love, men live and die in this love and what's coming onto this earth, if that love is that strong the shaykh's fires will reach the person in the time of difficulty because their service and their khidmat is, is ever remembered. But if there's no service, no khidmat, nothing then it's difficult to predict if that fires reaches a person in times of difficulty. We pray that Allah extend that and reach to that but the one who wants to be assured instead of guessing. We know our service, 
We know our dedication and the intensity of our love and commitment. Based on that we have uh, an assurity from ourself and our actions about our connection. And that's what the, the tariqah is trying to bring alive before immense events are opening. Because people panic, people become scared. But when you have your connection that's committed and you know what you've done to prove that on a daily basis of your commitment then you should feel very secure in your relationship with Allah with Sayyidina Muhammad and all the ulul amr who reward this type of loyalty no matter where the person is. A loyal person is blessed by all ulul amr because of the honourable and noble characteristics that they portray. Dishonourable people are not liked by anyone. We pray that Allah will give us greater understanding inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, in your last week's talk you mentioned that the Dajjal is here and he will announce himself. Sayyidi, is Imam Mahdi also physically here as a net positive? Yes, of course. <clears throat> There's a Sultan and Awliya, Mashaykh Abdul Faizi Dagestani, say in 1972 a child was born and he spiritually went to his presence, grabbed the child, took him to the Masjid al Mahdi in Turkey with the two holy companions. They're buried in a masjid underground with green lights, the holy sahabi are there. And those sahabi were very powerful in warfare and that Grand Shaykh wanted to make a du'a with his body of the child and with those sahabi to guard him and protect him. And that du'a was made and taken to the happy cave, an area somewhere they say don't know where but the jinn guard the region so that nothing can enter into that region without the jinn attacking people. So no doubt his, his presence is upon this earth, all guidance is from and all isharat is from his presence and from his heart. Sahib al-Imdad that he is the one whom sending faizes and knowledges and realities. And we said the knowledges that come out now of Holy Qur'an are from his reality of how to manifest the level of angels around you, the doing of good within you and then avoiding Allah's punishment. These types of realities that are not spoken about, not written about. This level of understanding of the Qur'an is from the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam on how to use ayat al kareem for the protection and the opening of what's coming upon this earth. Their character, they proclaimed him, they're about to do the rituals to sanctify him. For him to declare his presence about their prophecies, he has to have his temple. So why are they doing what they're doing for his temple? So that they can take that region. They want to rebuild and put his temple so that they can put him on the chair and say, he's here. So this is their belief and they will move according to their belief. But unfortunately Muslims don't have too much belief and that's why then the propagation and the teachings to wake up. They have strong belief. They move and act upon their belief and Muslims are being entertained by soccer, Kanye West and football in the holy region. They brought everything into the holy lands. And those are the signs that they don't want Sayyidina Mahdi 
they're not preparing for Sayyidina Mahdi Other ones, look what they're doing for the arrival of their Promised One. They're putting their life at stake for their belief. And Muslim people are building stadiums and soccer games for their belief. So it's the da'wah that's important. That's why we said spread the word, spread the links, spread the teachings for people to wake up, that to open their hearts, open their souls and the power and the energy that comes into their soul, make their connection to these lights and to these realities and prepare themselves for the events that are coming upon the earth and not to be reactive where they get angry like a chicken with no head, scream onto the streets, eh hey, Yahoo, why are you screaming, what's all that, you don't know what's happening and absolutely they don't know what's happening. So they're out there screaming for what? Because the people who don't know the time, they don't know what's coming. But if people understood and contemplated and meditated they would have made their connection much stronger, understanding the time has come. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. So, should we not be posting anything to bring awareness of what's going on? Should we what? Not be posting. Our posts? About what's happening in the world, the news. No, do you see me doing that? That's why I said, don't be shaykh, don't be clever, just follow your shaykh. If you, if, if you understood the tariqah, you don't have to post or write anything because you're making your own ship and your own project. If you're the student of a shaykh, he has already a mission from Prophet Why are you making your own mission? So the whole tariqah is the shaykh is on a course, he looks like he's a man on a mission, I'm going to support his mission, it's so much simpler. His article, I send it everywhere. His charity buttons, put them out. Holy days come, tell everybody make a well, grant food support our orphanages, support our projects, here are the articles, here's the AI coming out onto the website, here are the new apps, take the app everybody share it. Why you have to make your own ship and your own projects and then you're now responsible because you said the wrong thing and you're now trapped in something where somebody knock on your door and say, what was that? What, what did exactly did you just say? So the shaykh doesn't talk like that. So that this is not a time to be a hero, this time just to be somebody who follows a teacher. And the ones who follow they should be safe and the shaykhs whom are rightly guided, inshaAllah they should be safe because their guidance is also telling them, traverse this very carefully. So everything is coming out very careful, nothing crazy and chaotic. This is about ishq and love and muhabbat and teaching people not to go on the streets, not to yell, not to scream, not to say belligerent crazy things in the name of Islam making Islam look worse. When Allah warned people, don't speak a harsh word about what they believe, least they turn around and say horrible things about Allah. And this is exactly what they're doing. To go out with their thing on their head, scream, yell, yell, yell and then the guy is now insulting Islam, insulting everything. Well you made a thousand times worse and you're not going to change Allah's will, Allah's will is now coming upon this earth. This is not the time to scream in the street, this is the time to scream in your heart that I'm not even prepared, I'm not prepared to protect myself, my family nor my children. And I have to protect them with light and energy. That was the verse that Allah gave to us, there's angels all around, change your inner condition and then Allah will begin to change. If not when Allah orders punishment there's no way to stop it.
So Allah gave a solution in Ayatul Kareem. Everybody busy themselves, changing themselves, perfecting themselves. So their energy is strong, their connection is strong and the angels are all around them, their home and their children, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is there a relationship between minhu, minhi wa minhum and holy ayah of the month, Sakhra lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi ard jamiyan minhu? Minhi wa minhum that, that he is from me and I am from him, that these were the realities that Prophet was giving to us in regards to the Ahlul Bayt and to all whom love the prophetic reality and holy companions, that they're from the Muhammadan light. And that when you have a love for them, what you love, we gave a talk a few months ago in Muharram about that. If you truly love Prophet and you study the haqqaiq then you say, okay this holy soul is created from Muhammadun Rasulullah And if it submitted itself entirely and took away its own nafs, who then is present through that soul? Prophet Minhu, he's from my light, if he enters into fana I'm in his light, I'm present with him. Who were they harming in Karbala? Imam Hussain is the, one of the masters of fana, who's not present in his own light, then who's present in that light? Sayyidina Muhammad Haq, he was hearing through his ears, seeing through his eyes, breathing through his breath, speaking through his tongue and they slaughtered him in the fields of Karbala. So this is the immense guna, this is the immense sadness, this is the immense horrific actions of what people do when they don't have any spiritual understanding. Who was it that you were cutting down? And that's why the immense tears and crying because this is Muhammadun Rasulullah This is the light of Sayyidina Muhammad And he was teaching and telling them that this soul is from my light and it's so common and perfected, you will find me within him. So if you harm him as if you harmed me. And this is then the whole way of haqqaiqs. Why did you come to the shaykh? Because he took a life to be nothing. If he's trying to be nothing on a daily basis, who sees through his eyes? Muhammadun Rasulullah Who hears through his ears? Muhammadun Rasulullah Who touches through his hand when you take his hand and near his hand? is Muhammadun Rasulullah So how can you love Prophet and you don't express your love to the one whom is carrying the light of Sayyidina Muhammad on your earth and right near you and that you have access to them? So then it must be that you don't really love Muhammadun Rasulullah This is the whole tariqah teaching. That the whole embodiment of the shaykh is just a vehicle that he hollows out to bring the light of Prophet the light of Ahlul Bayt, the light of his shaykhs and any one of them can operate his faculties. 
like a breeze they can come and go through the faculties because this Hadith Al-Qudsi is powerful that who's speaking at that time when they come through the faculty of his physicality, who sees you through the eyes, who hears you, who's speaking to you. As a result it's an open mic, an open camera from the heavens. That's why then the tariqahs are adab is then guard yourself carefully, interact with them. That if you were a companion how would you treat Prophet Wouldn't you greet him? Wouldn't you take care of him? Wouldn't you want to be around him? Wouldn't you respect him And that becomes the great opening of sincerity when the servant treats the reality like that Allah grants the servant sincerity so they can actually witness the presence of Prophet Because if through the training you're achieving that, imagine then the haqqaiq and the reality of that. And that's why outside people don't know and that's why outside people are 10,000 years away from the presence of the reality of Prophet because they have no training and without training and protocol there's no audience with the king like that. His lifelong protocol teaching on how to have manners, how to keep good character, Allah is not letting a donkey into that presence. So it has to be trained and cleaned, cleaned inside, manners cleaned, character cleaned, the demeanor cleaned. When all of that protocol is met then what happens? They begin to witness Prophet because he's rida. He's satisfied with their khuluq and their mannerisms and character. We pray that Allah give us greater understanding and the immensities of the world of light and how insignificant our physicalities are and how amazingly powerful the reality of light is and how this light functions within us. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Shahadi ala Suri Kareem, alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.